Hello, hello. Today I am joined by Denise Walsh, and she is here to share with you her journey on the way to seven figures with her life back. Denise, I'm so happy that you're here. Would you take us back to when we first met about a year and a half ago and tell us your leverage story? What was it like in the in the before? Yes. So I <laughs> I had the dream and the desire to start my own coaching business for about three to four years. I had experienced success in my industry. I was ready to pivot and kind of climb a new mountain. I was, I had all of this stuff brewing inside of me, but I didn't know how to put the pieces together and I didn't really know where to start. And so for several years, I I second guessed myself, <laughs> one step forward, two steps back. I was kind of trying, but not really. And so I was in this place where it was like, I'm either going to go for it or I'm not. I either mm -hmm. have to fully dive in and, and do the thing or just be a mom. And COVID hit and I it was kind of like waffling in that space for a, a couple years, honestly. What was, what was causing the second guessing and the waffling? Because I know that there's, there are some women who are in that space right now and just hearing it from you normalizes, like there's nothing wrong with them. This is normal. It doesn't have to be this way, but it's normal until, until you get some help. So what, what, what was the second guessing stemming from? I th a few things. I think one was just insecurity, you know, like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's awesome. Like what I have to offer the world is awesome and great, but like, eek, is that the world going to think that? Mm -hmm. Um, but also being a solo paneur is kind of for the birds, meaning it was not easy to create by myself in my office. Um, and my husband would say, well, just write on a board. And I'm like, well, I need feedback. I want interaction. I want to brain dump and like help, you know, I want community to support this next vision so I can feel like I'm not just trying to figure it out on my own. And and that's yeah. really where I was like, all right, I can't just sit in my office behind my computer anymore. I need to really create some accountability and support. I, I think you're hitting on so many things that we as women don't allow ourselves to actually talk about. And here's why. What I'm hearing you say is, and you know, let's, we still live in a masculine entrepreneurial environment. I mean, it's only been like, what, 30, 50 years that women have had their own business, like in large numbers. And I've, I've learned that the masculine energy is a solo energy. Like, you know, just figure it out, put it on a board, like get to it. And this idea of talking it out with people and being in a community and getting loving accountability, not like, and, you know, <laughs> push accountability, but just like talking it out and feeling like we're not alone. I think that's kind of been ridiculed a bit in society. Like, oh, just, what, can't you just figure it out on your own? But do you, do, are you with me? Like in isolation, I doubt myself. Yes. Yeah. In isolation, I clean my desk instead of actually creating. <laughs> totally know what you mean, yeah. right? Go see what's in the fridge. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I was at this, I was at that point when I met you where I was like, all right, I either go all in or just like give up. And I'm so grateful I went all in. I was at that place where I thought I don't, I don't have another option because I'm clearly not doing it on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was it that, that got you over the hump? Was it seeing other women? Like, you, you know, when you go to boldheart.com, you see like all these women who are getting to six figures. Was it seeing that? Was it, you know what? I don't have a choice. I gotta, I gotta try this. What was it for you that got you over the edge? It was the roadmap for me because mm -hmm. I'm, a type A get her done. I've experienced success before. Like I've know how this works, but I didn't know how. And so I, I, yeah. I felt like if I could just tell me what to do, I'll do it. I, I know, you know? And so of course I've had my road bumps and growth experiences over the past year and a half, but even just yeah, having normal. the roadmap, I thought, okay, I can, 
this is how we do it. I'll go do it. And then I did. And then we'd have another Q&A or another, and I'd get another inspiration and just juice to the fire and, um, or fuel to the fire. And it kept me going. So for me, that was a huge, huge help. Yeah. Amazing. You know, I'm the same way. Two things happened for me. I don't know if it's the same for you. When I see that other women have done it, I'm like, you know, I'm pretty smart. Like if they can do it, I can find a way to do it. And if I know that the the recipe or the roadmap has been thousands of uh, thousands of other women have applied it and it works, the two put together make me think, okay, this is proven to work. Like I don't have to reinvent the wheel and these other people are at seven figures with their life back. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try this. So what, what's happened in the last year and a half for you as you've begun? Yeah. Cause this is not thin or thighs in 30 days, right? Anybody who tells you, you can change your entire business, um, to, to get it poised, to be at a million or more a year with, with you not being the day to day operations of it, it's not going to happen in 12 weeks. So you've been at this for a year and a half. What's happened so far? Well, I can tell you when I came in, I was a good coach, but I did not understand what it meant to be a CEO. So I mm. feel like I have put on, I even have a little CEO hat I use for pictures. <laughs> I, <have laughs> I love it. put on my CEO hat and really leveled up in my thinking. And so, and, and so over the last year and a half, I started with zero program. Um, what were you doing? Like one-to-one? I was posting a lot. I mean, I was living off of my old success, so I really wasn't making a ton in my coaching business. I was, yeah. I was like doing a lot of things, but I never really had anything for somebody to join. I am, um, and so I created my program. My first launch was over twenty thousand um, dollars, and we had consistent ten to fifteen k months in the first year. And now I'm leveling that up to twenty to thirty k months, um, and I think. The activators kept me in my own game because, again, it's like it's always easier to do what's easier. So yeah. <laughs> having the community words, right? <laughs> in the game and helped me to continue level up. So I created my program. I launched it several times. Um, I've done five in-person oh. retreats. I've created a certification program that takes all the things that I've done over the past year and puts it under one umbrella. So now I have one thing that I'm talking about rather than several. And it feels like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I feel so in alignment with the actions I'm taking and the support I'm putting out into the world. Um, it's, it feels like, like a breath of fresh air, like, ah, oh, finally. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you, Denise, and you know, you launched a program. You've done, you said five events you're making 20, 30 K or more a month. This is all in 18 months. This is like pretty radical. It's so cool. And I didn't, I remember um, at the end of last year, I thought, well, let's just figure out my numbers. What? Cause again, I'm not a detailed quite person. I, but see, you know the numbers. So I've learned that from you. Know your numbers. What's happening? And so I went through it all, and I was shocked by how much I I didn't even quite realize it because I was just, you know, working my business, and it was a it was super cool. Yeah. Do, do, I mean, do you like making that kind of money? Oh yeah. What's possible? I mean, obviously, that's like a rhetorical question, right? But, but what do you like specifically, specifically about making that kind of money, doing something that you really love? Like, what's good about having the, the, like that money on demand? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, 20, 30 K months and it feels fun and easy. Like not, I mean, again, it's effort, but like it, right. it's not grind. And that's a game changer for me. Um, I love having resources to give back. I love traveling. I love, I've got two little boys. Um, we go on vacation every three months or so. Like we're, we want to live life. And mm -hmm. I think 
creating a business that allows me to live life and be a mom. I do. I pick my boys up every day from school. It's only three miles, but like I'm a present home. It doesn't matter, I'm, right? I'm present I know at home and I want yeah. to be. And I've got a lot of gifts and skills to offer the world and, and I get to do both. It's really so special. How old are your boys? Nine and 12. Do, do they look up to mama and say like, wow, mama, she has her own business. They, uh, I just went to a speaking engagement and um, I showed them pictures of me in front of the room and they're all like, whoa, what are you doing, mom? And it's cute. Mm, I have little tears in my eyes coming up because I know that my kids have said that throughout, you know, I, I've been employed, self-employed for 22 years and there are little moments where they're like, Wow, mama, you're famous. Wow, mama, you're like, you've made good money. And it, it, what it does is it instills this something in them that makes them feel like maybe they can be in control of their own earnings and career going forward. Absolutely. What is it that you, you felt that you now know that you needed that you didn't know before? Like, you know, you went, you went from in 18 months to 20, 30 K months and you know, it's only going to keep growing. Right. So like, I almost want to get back with you in 18 months to see where you are. Right. Cause you'll probably be at, you know, I don't know, like 80, 80 K months is a million. It's not that far away. What, what did you not know that you needed or what, it, what is it that now you have? Like you, you talked about the activators, which is kind of like the recipe, the roadmap, like first do this, then do this. What else has helped you get to this stride that you have in growing your business and doing it without the grind? Well, I have made some hires. Um, I hired a VA and I hired a salesperson. And mm -hmm. the month I hired my VA, I freaked out. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. Because there are some bumps, right? Because the old paradigm, the old mindset, it like bumps up against the new. And then we're like, you know, it doesn't, it's not always easy gliding, right? Yeah. So where, what happened? Well, and I remember you always say, like hire for the business you want, not the business you have. And so it felt like a little bit of a stretch, you know, like, ah! <laughs> and so I was rest restless and not sleeping as well. And, and it got again to the similar to when I said yes to Boltar, I was like, I, I, this is the next step. I can't go backwards. So I made the hire, um, both hires in one month. And then I had so much time. They took off customer service. They took off follow up. They took off all these things off my plate so that I could create so that I, you know, and I, again, it, if I hadn't had the support of the activators, the support of the Q and A's, I would have talked myself out of my own dream because yeah. if it were easy, we'd already be there. And so making those steps, now it feels like, what would I do without them? But that month, I remember feeling like it was a glass ceiling and I was hitting it and I had to decide, am I gonna bust through or stay stuck? And thankfully I had the support of Boltart to, to bust through. Yeah, it's really, I see so many women and I was that one uh, in the way beginning, like I hired a VA virtual assistant, if you're listening and you're not sure, um, they're just wonderful people. <laughs> I hired a VA. I worked with her for a few months and I talked myself out of it because I was like, oh, I can do it faster, better. You know, why should I pay somebody to do something I can do in five minutes? But what happens is um, I was actually just talking to a private client. I was um, I'm, I'm coaching uh, just today. And I said, you have to lean on your team more. And most people don't have enough of a team. And you may, you, this may have happened to you too, Denise, where I was saying, you got to tell your team that like, let's say you're a, a kitchen staff, like in a restaurant and, and you got to tell the, the team that you're going for the Michelin star and they, you now, even though you've been the wash, you know, the washer of dishes and you've peeled the potatoes and you've you know been on salad and sauces and whatever you, you can't be peeling potatoes anymore if you want to get to michelin star you gotta have a world-class team and you gotta lean on them fully and when 
all these things get delegated, then you can rise to focus on exponential growth and visioning. And I really believe, and you've you've really done this well, Denise, I really believe our job at this level, if you're at six figures and you really want to get, like if you're serious about getting to a million, you need to get to this place where you can spend more time thinking, less doing more thinking. And that's what you've done, Maybe right? By so delegating. Much more brain space. Because I yeah. wasn't in the weeds of customer service emails or... And, and what I found too, to be honest, is that so many things were falling through the cracks because I didn't want to do those things anymore. I've been doing them for so long that it was, um, and I thought I either need to hire to get it done or like, it just, it's not, it's not happening as consistently as it could be. And so hiring this, all those things gave me back brain space and it ensured that the work that needed to be done was done. Yeah. You're part of this community now and you're, you're on the way to a million a year with all these other women, right? who have a healthy ambition and yet they want nice lives too. What's the difference between, cause you mentioned being in isolation, second guessing. You mentioned just a moment ago that you would have talked yourself it had it not been for the activators and the, and the weekly Q and A's with me. Um, you would have talked yourself out of your dream. Um, what's it like? What what's the role of the community? I think we underestimate how much we sabotage when we're alone. Mm -hmm. So you're, some some women don't have the kind of community that you're now a part in of. What's it like for them if you could paint the picture of having access to all these women like almost twenty four seven. Well, I can What's say different? the first year I showed up to everything and said zero words. <laughs> mm. Mm. And I what still that? got what? so much out of it. Every single call. I mean, I still felt like I was a little bit of a newbie because I was starting kind of over. <laughs> um, so I, I was, I just listened and I learned so much by the other questions that were asked. I learned and felt the energy. I mean, I would get off a call and just be so motivated to keep taking action. It, it kept me in my own game. Um, and, and yeah, having an accountability buddy and a pod, a small group of people where you get to know their businesses a bit more intimately and can ask specific. It's like a, a mastermind that you meet with once a month and it's the same peer community. What's good about having them know about your business and like you mastermind once a month? Oh, it's, it's priceless um, to hear what they're doing and then to get direct feedback on my strategy, what's working, what's not working, generate ideas. It's, it's priceless. It's, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't miss one if I think I missed one in one year cause I was on vacation, but, um, <laughs> but they're so important because I think again, being in isolation and trying to spin our wheels or, or figure it out on our own is, is for the birds. Being in the community and asking questions, hearing what's working, gives us the space to go do, do it for ourselves. Yeah, amazing. Denise, I want you to future pace. Okay, you're, you're, you're like kicking butt and taking names in just 18 months. Like you're doing more than women I've met who've been in business for 20 years and they're working longer hours and they're frustrated and all that. So I just want to go forward another 18 months. So three years from the time we met, where, what's going to happen in another 18 months? Where will you be with this, with this recipe, the support, the, everything you're talking about, all the things you're going to implement, what look realistic, right? Like, you know, you could say like, Oh, billion dollars. No, but like for real, where are you going to be in 18 months with this type of support? With the amount of growth I've seen at these past 18 months, I truly do believe I can be at 60, $80,000 months in 18 months. 
um, and have some more hires, some support coaches with me. So again, I stay the visionary and I'm adding value and I get to stay in my lane. You know, I'm kind of outsourcing the things that don't bring me joy and really staying. Um, so it's about scaling now. I feel like I've got the program. I've got, um, you know, now it's truly just scaling. And when that happens, I'm like, maybe I should dream bigger, but um, it's fun to think about because I absolutely believe it's possible. Yeah, so 60 to 80 a month. You know the 83,000 a month is a million, right? I have 84,000 on my note over here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. $83,333.33 a month to be exact. You, you know, you're going to do it, Denise. I know you're going to do it. Um, and that's just 18 months from now. Yeah, it's exciting. To Holy cow. What, what, um, what's, how proud will your family be of you, your husband, your kids, your kids may not know. I don't, I didn't tell my kids, you know, they were too little when I told them 15 years ago that I crossed a million for the first time, but they could just sense like we got a new house and, you know, more vacations. Mommy was around more often. What's going to, how's that going to make a difference in your personal life to be at 60 to 80 K months? I'm, I think it just elevates everything that we do. Um, we'll be able to, I mean, we'll do the, the traveling, we'll be able to give back, we'll be able to save more. I mean, all of the things that we do now, we'll be able to do more. And that will be, I mean, 18 months. I mean, we are getting into teenagers here, so things get more and more expensive. And it's a fun place to be, to be able to say yes to camp, to sports, to whatever interests them, you know, we don't have to, um, we don't have to squash their dreams, you know, we can pour into them too. And you know what I found is by virtue of um, having their mom be a, an entrepreneur who loves what she does and is makes good money, just let's just call it what it is, right? They all want, my kids want to be self-employed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. They do. And we keep saying, like, all right, you can be a consumer or a creator. What are you going to create? <laughs> mm, interesting. Hey, Denise, I just want to say, first, like, super proud for you. Like, high five. Seriously, super proud for you. Um, what you've created in just a year and a half um, is more than other people create in 10 and a half years, you know? Um, the other thing is uh like you've just today there's a there's a woman uh you know here with us just listening and and saying wow uh denise gave me the possibility she she showed me that i can do it too and so just you know well done for that and i can't wait to connect again in this way in 18 months and see where you are all right let's do it <laughs> thanks for sharing your story and, and letting us celebrate you Thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you next time.